Welcome to the wood shop. Welcome back to the wood shop. My name's Brett. Today we're gonna to be making some charcuterie boards. You have to say it that way because it's French. Charcuterie, ha <laughs> ha I don't speak French, so I, I don't really know how it's pronounced. I'm speaking French. You see, you learn to speak French by putting a rubber band around your lips. You know how French words are. They have too many letters and half of them don't get pronounced. It's probably pronounced something like or something like that. I don't know. Here's an example. Chapeau means Steve? hat. Is that you? Oof means egg. <laughs> it's like those French have a different word for everything. Yeah. So uh, anyway, we're going to be making some charcuterie boards today. And uh, we've got several species of wood to play with in the shop. Um, come on over here. Let me show you this first one. I pulled these off of the slab pile a couple weeks ago and they've been acclimating to my shop. We took this white oak tree down in September of 2020 um, and had it slabbed up and it's been sitting on the pile. So these are the first slabs that I've been able to pull off the pile. So I'm pretty excited to work with those. Can make some cool live edge something or other with those. And then over here, I've got some ash. It's got some cool figure in it. Uh, this is a nice dark uh, jatoba or Brazilian cherry. Um, I actually do know how that's pronounced because I speak some Portuguese. It's jatoba, not jatoba like if it were Spanish. Um, by the way, hello to my Portuguese and Brazilian friends. Oi, to the bang. And then over here on this pile, I've got some American cherry and i uh, got some silver maple that might contrast really nicely with the jatoba. We'll do some laminating, some accent strips there. Got some strips of walnut. Might be able to put those to use. Um, some oak. And uh, what else? Yeah, that's about it. Maple, oak, walnut, cherry, jatoba, ash and white oak over there. So let's get creative and make some charcuterie boards. Let's see if this is even going to be dry enough to use. We've got a pinless moisture meter here and it's got settings on it for drywall, for masonry, Softwood, hardwood. Oh, well, this is hardwood. This is white oak. And we're getting 21%, 22, 21, 21. I think it alarms anything over 17, 16 or 17. Uh, 21, 22%, 23. Let's compare that to the ash and the jatoba that have been in my shop for a few years, uh, or at least a couple. The ash is saying 18, 16 percent, 18 percent, 17, Jatoba 21, 20, and the Jatoba is definitely a harder wood than the ash. It's got a tighter grain, 21 percent. So. I think we're probably at equilibrium with the white oak. This jatoba doesn't have as much um, character as some of the lighter woods, but it has this nice, rich, dark color. And like I said, I think it would contrast really nicely with some maple, um, maybe even maple and walnut strips added in there. I'm not sure. We'll have to play with it. We've got we've got 41 inches of length, uh, so we could make a few boards out of that. We're just gonna let the wood tell us what it wants as far as how long or how wide. Uh, I don't really have a set plan. 
Oh no. I'm hitting my trim piece here. Ah, uh, I did not account for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I've decided to add some accent strips to this Brazilian cherry and that means gluing up and that means we need nice straight edges to to glue against so that we don't have gaps in our joints. I have a jointer but I'm not very good at using it. Also unfortunately my shop doesn't have many big flat surfaces. Um, probably the table saw is my biggest flattest surface that I have. Uh, so testing this cherry on the table saw this this one it looks like it was a jointed edge and it looks pretty good it seems pretty flat and square on um, on the table saw if i put it on a level still pretty good but not not perfect. So what I'm going to do is joint it on the table saw and I'm going to use a trick that I learned from Matt Outlaw on his channel using a, a level along the fence to joint a longer board. So let me get my outfeed table set up and we'll joint that board on the table saw. So to do that I'm going to use the already jointed edge and put that up against the level and then the level will ride up against the fence so I'm just locking this in in the wrong place just to demonstrate and then it's it's important to run both the level and the wood together because now the level is referencing off the fence and the wood is referencing off the flat straight square level and then that will translate to a straight square cut at the blade. If you don't use the level and you are just to run the jointed edge up against the fence, if there are any imperfections in this edge it's writing up against the fence, those imperfections are going to translate over to the blade side and you'll just continue to have the same problem. I was wrong about not having a big flat surface. Uh, this countertop is actually better than I thought it was uh, because I was concerned about the seam that ran through the middle here but it actually looks pretty good. So our jointed edge is, is decent but this is the outside of the board so i um, not super concerned with that. I just wanted to have a pretty straight square reference in case I'm running it against other tools. So I'm going to use this melamine shelf as a planer sled and I'm going to send this Jatoba through the planer. Uh, as you can see here it's got a bit of a twist and some cupping to it. 
So that is our rocky side. This other side is not as severe. So I'm going to do this side down and then plane, plane this side and get that flat. And then we'll be able to put it through without the sled. So I'm going to put a glob of hot glue on the, the high corner here. Nope. I'll hold that while it cools off and sets up, and then we'll be ready to run that through the planer. As it turns out, this, this part of the countertop is the perfect height as an outfeed for the planer. I didn't plan that, it just worked out that way. Now we can get a better look at the grain. Uh, over here we got some pretty straight grain all this whole length. We got some cathedraling in through here. And we've got an overall length of 41 and a half inches, but we have some cracking here. It's not full thickness, but I don't think I want to try to repair that with like CA glue or epoxy but we could cut around it we could make a handle on either side of this i think maybe a handle on this side and we've got an overall width of seven and three eighths which is a little bit narrow for a charcuterie board i think i want to beef that up and our thickness is still it's pretty thick uh, i don't i don't think we want to keep that full thickness we're at about an inch and a quarter um that so we're gonna have to take that down some but i think we can get two boards out of this chatoba so i'm just gonna try to figure out where to cut this what do we got here for length on the crack it goes to about five inches which is actually kind of perfect for a handle five inches so you got a little bit on the end and then you know i've got big hands but so pretty much anybody would have smaller hands than me so that's a good spot for a handle. Maybe we do something like a slope there and kind of a paddle shape. Something like that. What's that give us for length? Oh, that's, maybe don't need to go quite that long. Cause I would like to get a second board out of this. This is 20, 23 and a half inches to here, which would only leave 17 and a half on the other side. Let's uh, I say 40, 41 and a half. So let's shoot for 20. So here is 20. Can do our 
kind of paddle shape here. And bring this, yeah, that looks a little better. And then we'll put in some, some strips here. So I've got a couple pieces of cherry here. Um, this one's a little thick, but this one looks about right. And I really like this green here. It's not as awesome on the other side. And it's just a little, little thicker, maybe a quarter inch thicker than the Brazilian cherry. So uh, I kind of like how the, the thickness of that. And then I'm not sure what species this is. I think it's oak, uh, probably white oak, but I'm not really sure. If any of you know just by looking at it on, cam on video, let me know in the comments. It seems like it's a fairly open green. Um, which makes me think oak rather than maple, but it's not labeled anywhere. So kind of came with a scrap pile that I got from my hardwood dealer. So I'm thinking some thinner strips of this lighter wood and then sandwich. So lighter strips on either side of this cherry and then sandwich that onto somewhere right about in here on the Brazilian cherry and I'm going to go ahead and do that to both boards because I want to that'll give us a little extra width there what's this that's three quarters plus another couple quarters be an inch and a quarter onto what did I say seven and three eighths so eight and a half a little over eight and a half inch wide charcuterie board that's probably decent so I'm gonna rip some of this stuff down on the table saw I need to change my blade first because as you could see here on these edges that I quote-unquote jointed on the table saw I got some burning uh, my blade is very dirty and it might be kind of dull because I've been using it a lot so I've got a new blade. I'm going to put that on, but I'm going to do that off camera. You don't need to watch that. One of these days I'll do some table saw maintenance, um, but not today. Check out the new blade. Ooh, shiny. And it cuts like a dream. No burning. Unless I'm too slow. And look at all the sawdust, or I mean man glitter. Yeah. I don't have dust. I have a dust collection hood right here for the planer, but it only fits this way and then I can't fit a hose behind it. It, it is not reversible, unfortunately. So I just don't use it. And by the way, it doesn't work that great anyway. It works better than this, but it's not 100%. Today is the next day and I just took these out of the clamps. I had them clamped up together like this and I did a terrible job. It's a good thing I've got extra thickness because I'm going to have to do quite a bit of planing.
See how I'm struggling with this bandsaw? I got this benchtop bandsaw from a friend for free, and I hate using it. The blade wanders all over the place, and it's super slow and frustrating. It's definitely worth the price I paid for it. I have a 14 inch bandsaw coming from Grizzly that my wife gave me for Christmas, but it's on back order until who knows when. I finally gave up and used the jigsaw instead. I don't know why I didn't make this bevel cut on the table saw, or even the miter saw. That would have been so much easier, not to mention more accurate and cleaner. This oscillating belt sander comes in really handy for shaping and smoothing out jagged jigsaw cuts. The table tilts up to 45 degrees. I had put a 15 degree bevel on the boards to make them easier to pick up off the table. I really love this router lift that I got from Rockler. Before I got this lift, I was doing bit changes both above and below the table, which is quite awkward, and setting the bit height was a bit complicated and not very accurate. Now I can dial in my bit height precisely with the turn of a crank. Here I'm installing a quarter inch roundover bit to soften the edges of the board's top and bottom. This is a technique you may have seen before for temporarily attaching a stop to my work surface. You just put painter's tape on both surfaces and then super glue the tape together. When you're done, you can just peel off the tape and throw it away. I'm using a 3 quarter inch straight bit to cut a shallow groove in the center of the board, probably about a sixteenth of an inch deep. Kind of like a dish, so round items like berries and grapes won't roll off the edges of the charcuterie board. This was actually my daughter Mimi's idea. I haven't seen anybody else use this idea on their charcuterie boards, and I think it's brilliant. Thanks Mimi! I made horizontal passes and overlapped them incrementally across the top surface of the board.
See what I'm doing there? Just enough of a dish so the round things don't roll off. Then we need to smooth out that transition with a disc sander. 40 grit is a good choice for shaping because it quickly removes material. I then work my way up to 100 grit. I'm not going to show you all that sanding because that's about as exciting as watching a woodworker sand his project. Two hours later. Then over to the drill press to make a hole for hanging. I think this was a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit. Can you see the smoke? This Brazilian cherry is pretty dense. I don't want to damage my bit, so I just took it slow. These charcuterie boards are really starting to take shape. I've got them shaped and sanded to 100 grit. And now I'm going to um, make the grain pop with denatured alcohol. A lot of people use water to pop the grain. Uh, I like using alcohol because it dries much faster. You get the same result. And this is a fun part because this is where we get to see where the grain and color really pop and see what it's going to look like once it gets finished on it. So. Let's pop that grain. Oh, nice. Look at that. All right, we're ready for our second to last step. We're gonna give these nice smooth boards a mineral oil bath in food safe mineral oil.
When I started making this video, I wasn't sure how many boards I was going to get accomplished. I started this project on Sunday and today is Friday. Um, the whole reason for making charcuterie boards is that um, our church is having a game night for couples tonight and I wanted to have some boards to serve some snacks on. Uh, so today's Friday, the event is tonight. I was able to complete two of the boards, so I was, I'm happy that I was able to do that. Uh, finishing touch that I put on it is just some leather cord to hang these on the wall. I was a little surprised after I took these out of the mineral oil bath that they kept sweating oil and, and still I've got some um, still got some oil coming out of the pores. So I'm not sure how long that's going to continue because I've never done this before. This is my first time soaking wood in oil and then trying to <laughs> get it where it's not oily anymore. I had planned on putting a final finish of beeswax board butter on these, but I don't think they're going to need it. I think the oil is plenty. It definitely brings out the color of the wood. They're nice and smooth. Uh, they'll be water resistant because they're saturated with oil. In fact, it's still coming out of their pores. And these have had a chance to sit dry for several hours. So we'll see what happens. Until next time, my friends, be safe and love each other.